All right, I am back, and I've bench tested the uh, suction box, and I have it hooked up temporarily here with the wire nuts. These wires are pretty long here, so before I crimp on the quick disconnects, I want to um, install it in the piano, and then I can cut the wires shorter if need be. Uh, it makes a little bit neater installation, or I might just leave the long wires and then bundle them up. But I have the suction box with my long length of hose that I have right now temporarily all hooked up and have it all mounted outside the piano for testing purposes and to demonstrate what I think is probably the correct level of vacuum to set the pump to for most ordinary purposes. And also going to discuss very briefly where the user controls are going to be mounted. So let me grab a old towel here and lay on the floor. And I'm going to get down on the floor here and I'll look underneath the piano here. And I've got a roll of music up on the um, spool box. We'll listen to it's a long way to Tipperary here. So vacuum level. I think for most ordinary usage I would adjust the speed control during playback so that the main reservoir bellow here just closes. It gets to the position about about where the spring is fully compressed, you know, as far as the bellow is going to close, maybe just a little bit before that point, because that would be the maximum vacuum level available to you in foot pumping, and I don't think you should use the suction pump to overdrive the mechanism. And this piano, if you turn the pump up at full tilt, it plays at a pretty mean volume. I mean, you can really pump some sound out of this thing, but I would think that that might be considered abuse of the mechanism. And um, so what I've done is uh, adjusted, adjusted it though to where when the speed control knob is pointing straight up like this, and when it's mounted under the key bed here, like this, the blue mark is going to be facing straight out. That is the normal playback position. And then I made further adjustments there using this um, trim pot here on the speed control unit. Now this pump is really pretty quiet and I think it's going to produce even less noise once it's mounted inside the piano cabinet. Um, because most of the time this bottom board is going to be in place. There's not really much to see here other than the sustained pneumatic and even then when it's mounted in there it's not going to be too loud. I'm going to turn the tempo control to all the way low, set it to play, and turn on the pump. And as you can see, the bellow just closes there. Now I've got a little bit of adjusting to do on my air motor because it's not pausing like it should. But as you can see, the bellow is just closed and I can turn it down and it, it because of the check valve it takes a little while for it to respond it'll um, I just it where it just closes there like that and okay it's reached a point where it's pausing now where it's opened the uh, sustain pedal pneumatic there and it's it's pausing just but that's where I, I like to operate this at. I think would be the proper operating position is right there where it just closes. That would be the maximum vacuum level available to a person foot pumping the piano. And I would think that that would be the maximum permissible vacuum. And of course, the trim pot allows you to adjust the minimum speed of the pump, but the maximum speed of the pump is fixed. And, um, you can, it, this, this suction box produces 70 inches water column of vacuum, which is pretty substantial. And I'll, I'll demonstrate for you here what that's going to be like. But let's go ahead and play. It's a long way to Tipperary, and I'll alter the pump speed of, at a few times to demonstrate. I think this plays at 70.
gently rewind it without ripping the paper off. So there you go. That's a little demonstration of the pump and and uh, how it works, the mechanisms. This will be the two-speed switch and this is the rewind speed and this is the playback speed. And obviously the rewind speed doesn't need to be tampered with. I might um, Might saw this off and then grind file a uh, screwdriver slot in the um, in the tip tip of that there so that it can't be fiddled with. There's no reason to mess with it. Um, this piano has a a lever that is located up under here, and when it's uh, pulled forward towards the front, it prevents the keys from moving. Um, during automatic operation, this is supposed to allow for faster repeats, faster trills, um, while the piano is playing. It also makes it convenient that you can't, it sort of locks the piano out, you can't play it. My intention is to mount this control right here at the front just to the right of this knob. That way it is out of the knee space of anybody who is wanting to manually play the piano and it will be at a convenient location 
right there. And for most people look, viewing the piano from a standing position, it's not going to be visible. It's going to be easily accessible to the uh, operator of the piano, too. So that's the update on the electrification of the good old Color and Campbell here. We have the electrification kit online. We just need to get it into the piano now. And in order to do that, to route the wires and everything, I'm going to have to take all this back apart like I had in previous videos. I'll even have to remove the keys here in the area where the wires are going to run up underneath the keys and back down. And I'm going to try to utilize existing holes, but I also might consider drilling new holes instead um, to route the wires. I don't think doing that is going to be anything negative. And if you look at the holes that are already existing here, like this one, um, it's pretty crude. Uh, in fact, all the holes that were drilled when the player mechanism was installed in the piano are really pretty crude. It's unbelievable to think that the company that made this piano action was owned by this piano company, but that's the truth. This is a, a standard uh, player action, and they were a division of Color and Campbell Industries. So, go figure. Um, but anyway, this the uh, that's where we're at on this. And thank you for watching. I might put up another video of its long, long way to Tipperary without the interruptions, just as a music video. But I've got a lot of piano rolls here to play now. So um, and I've got a lot of other work to do other than just making piano videos. So I'll mess around, play a roll or two, and then I've got to tear all this apart. Also, I need to find out why this A key doesn't play. It's the third A from the um, right end. So that'll all, that'll all be resolved when I pull it back apart. Anyway, Oklahoma Bridge is here and thank you for watching.